I've got a mini PC here that, a bit of a spoiler, is probably the best that I have reviewed. And it's really impressive. Why is that? Well, it's the world's first mini PC, well, small form factor PC here that does have AMD discrete graphics. So it has the Radeon RX 6600M with eight gigabytes of RAM. And then the APU is AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX. 8 cores, 16 threads, 4.6 gigahertz maximum turbo. This thing is a monster, but Mini's forum have done such a fantastic job with the Neptune HX90G here's cooling, because they've got two fans, plenty of copper in there, and in my testing, again a bit of a spoiler here, it's probably one of the best, not only for the thermals, but the features, the performance, and it's a fair price, really, what I think they're selling the bare bones for. And you can get this configuration that they sent out to me with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD for around about just over 900 US dollars. In the box, you will find our stand base, the stand, some screws, HDMI cable, 262 watt power supply, power supply cable, user guide, and just a warning there not to open it up because they have applied liquid metal. If you open it, it's got a seal around it. That liquid metal could spill out onto the motherboard and it would be game over for this mini PC. Now this PC is a bit of a big boy. You can see the size of it here compared to my hands is large for a mini PC. Well, it's now a small form factor PC. So it has the Radeon RX 6600M, reasonably powerful GPU, two coolers, you can just see them inside there, two of them quite large, and they are using here uh, carbon fiber up to 70%, or around 70% with the plastics. So down the bottom, you can see where we can mount the stand. Now, you don't have to use the stand, there are rubber feet on this side, so you can just sit it down like that if you wanted to do so there with it. I just wanted to show you too, you can see inside there, where one of the vents is for the hot air is gonna be pushed out by one of those two coolers and then the other side there. So good looking cooling so far. And of course in this video, I'll report the thermals and what I am able to get. So here we have our power in, two display ports, so 4K60 with both of these, and then a HDMI, HDMI two of them, two, and USB 3.2 type A Gen 2, and then we've got a Gen 1, a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and up the front here, a Type-C port. Now the Type-C port, this is USB 3.2 Gen 2, and then a USB 3.2 Gen 1. It's getting a little confusing here. And we've got separate audio jacks, which is great to see. And then our power on button with a status LED. Gaining access to the internals now, the rear of it, the bottom of it, we've got these two rubber feet, but you need to pull them off because we have to access two screws here, and then another two here. Now, it's just using a double-sided tape there, an adhesive. It is easy to pull that off, and you're not going to damage it, which is good. So those four screws, they are gone, and getting into the internals, it looks like it would be difficult to pry off, but just using my finger now on the corner here, I've been able to lift up one side, and then just gently go around the outside, popping it up. You hear little unclicking noises, and this part seems a little more difficult, so I have to be careful with that. Okay, just to pull on it, and there we go. You can now take that off, which does present us then a bracket that's here. So we have to remove that, another four screws to gain access to where the RAM is. That was simple enough to remove, and with it out of the way, you can see we've got our SSD right here. So this is our boot drive. Now this does support PCIe 4 spec, and we've got, of course, upgradable RAM. It's possible to change that over. So I've got two sticks of DDR4 here, it is 3.2 gigahertz, giving us 16 gigabytes in total, and our Wi-Fi card easily accessible. So all from this side, you don't need to remove the whole thing. That's as far as you need to go if you wanna upgrade it. Now there is a spare slot right here, another M.2 NVMe slot, so that's 2280 in size, if you wanted to add a secondary SSD. There seems to be no SATA connectors here, so it looks like we cannot add a 2.5 inch drive. Now the Wi-Fi antennas, I can see one of them is located right here, and the other one looks like it is on the other side where I cannot access it. So it's good for upgrades. You can 
change and swap SSDs, upgrade the RAM, and even swap out the wireless card. And if you did need to reset the BIOS, if you couldn't do it with the little push in button here, the little hole right there, then you could unplug this BIOS battery here, the CMOS, which is saving all of those settings. That's another way to reset it. Looking at our BIOS now, so we do have a pretty much unlocked BIOS here, got a lot of advanced settings. Now for those of you that do ask me this question, if you could run it as a server, well you could, under power configuration, you want to enable this setting, AC failure resume. Now they've always set it to always off, and you can set it to always on. So as soon as it detects it's got power, it turns itself on, so you can run it on a switch, and that's what you want as a server of course. So if you go out of that, go into AMD CBS, there's another option here that some people might like to tweak. Normally we go into this one, which is MBIO common options to adjust things for the Vega graphics. But of course we now have dedicated graphics with this mini PC. So you go into this, but you don't go into the graphics configuration. You go now to this one. So SMU common options, you can go down here, fan control if you wanted to tweak the fan profiles. I recommend you don't mess with any of this. Only change things if you know what you're doing, of course. System configuration. Now, I'm gonna leave it on auto, but you can set it to 54 watts, and that'll be the highest. I believe auto would probably be 45. I'll leave it at that as it is out of the box. And there's a few other things in there. If you're an expert, you can tweak there, okay? But I recommend that you don't mess about with this too much. Let's move over now into Windows. The HX90G does run Windows 11 Pro and the wireless adapter is the RZ608. So this is Wi-Fi 6E, the faster spec, really fast. I'm getting around 700 megabits per second with my one gigabit line. Now my desktop PC running also a Wi-Fi 6E car, but it's an Intel one with high gain antennas can get around 900 megabits per second, 920 sometimes. So it's not too far off and considering it's just normal little antennas inside it, it's pretty good, no problems with the range either. Now you'll see that we've got our CPU listed here, the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 16 times, because it has 16 threads and eight cores there. It's very powerful. I'll just show you quickly some of the benchmarks here. So for the Geekbench score, single core, not bad, over 1500 there, and multi-core score here is impressive. So that is a similar score to what I get with the Core i7 11800H from Intel. Similar performance, both of them have eight cores and they're both 45 watt parts. Now this will turbo, maximum turbo, 6.4 gigahertz. And the GPU, so time spike score here, synthetic benchmark shows me that it is about, or well, similar speed to that of a a mobile RTX, GeForce RTX 3060. Just slightly off that performance. We do have the eight gigabytes of dedicated RAM, so it's potent enough that you can do a bit of gaming, which I'll show you later on, and 4K video editing will be good on this too, which I'll demonstrate later on too. So the SSD, which is a PCIe 3 spec one, not particularly fast, you could install a faster one there, but those are the speeds. It's 512 gigabytes. And finally here for benchmarks, Cinebench R23 getting just over 12,000 points as you can see there. So that's run for 10 minutes. Now you probably could get a better score out of this, but I don't really think there's that much more you could squeeze out. Maybe if you mess around with the power limits, that's really all we can do. You can't overclock it even though this being an HX is meant to be unclocked, unlocked, sorry. Looking now at our 4K video playback, this is the Jellyfish test file. So it's 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10 bit, HEVC, flawless playback. Not a problem, there are no drop frames here. So that is really good. And then another 4K one, but this is now 4K 60 HDR. No drop frames at all. So this handles media files demanding VP9 HEVC absolutely perfect here. The same goes for streaming 4K. This is 4K 60 through Chrome. Absolutely flawless performance. Wow, okay, it dropped seven frames and that was just, I don't know what why it's done that, but it's really, you don't notice that ever, not eight frames within almost 4,000. So excellent playback performance here. Streaming, anything you throw at it, it handles it with ease.
This is also a mini PC where I can highly recommend it for video editing. It's got plenty of power for that. The dedicated graphics, of course, means that the performance here with the timeline is really good playback I speeds. So. I don't really I see any drop frames, out. any lag here at all. I have just a basic edit and these are 4K 100 megabit files, but there's really no slowdown because we do have the dedicated graphics. It's just making this a lot more effortless and you don't see any of the annoying kind of lag that comes into play. Now export times, I'll test that out. And normally it is actually a little slower because it's not Intel. The Adobe Premiere Pro video editor that I'm using normally favors Intel because it's got Intel's quick sync to help accelerate the export times. But I'll still see with the YouTube preset exactly how long it's going to take for one minute of footage. It's about to finish up. So there we go, 24 seconds. That is blazing fast. I am impressed now with that export performance. YouTube 4K preset, one minute of footage only took around maybe 23 seconds. That's great. On to gaming, so here we are with Grand Theft Auto 5, and I've got it set to 1080p medium settings, medium with the pedestrian and everything else on normal. So all of those settings here all in the middle with the bar, and this performance is fantastic. So around 160 frames per second, and the best part, this mini PC is making basically no noise. Those fans are on idle. The cooling on it is magnificent. It's probably the best when it comes to cooling now that I've tested out for mini PCs because normally it would sound like a gaming laptop right now. Those fans would be screaming away. They'll be roaring. It's unbelievable how cool it's running. Look at those temperatures. They're good, 70 degrees. And it's only pulling about, well, what is it pulling about there? About 70 watts? Really good. But let's step it up now and test out Cyberpunk. Yet again, great performance. Over 100 frames per second. So with Cyberpunk 2077, I'm running 1080p with the low quality preset. Now I could run medium. Medium might run fine on this, but I want the best frame rate possible. And at 1080p, this is good. This is better than PlayStation 4 Pro, PlayStation 4, definitely. So really great performance here. And I can, yes, hear the fan now just a little bit with this particular game is pushing the system hard. I've seen the GPU pull up to 100 watts. It's currently around 80 there and the APU pulling about 40 watts. Thermals and fan noise. So the thermals are really good, magnificent, as I said before, with just the performance, with the thermals and the fan noise. There is no fan noise. It barely makes any noise at all, yet it doesn't surpass 80 degrees Celsius. You can see with the wattage, the maximum it has pulled is around about 61. So that's good. And all up, the cooling is a complete overkill, really. It's got liquid metal, Lots of thermal transfer pipes in there and the two fans. It's doing a fantastic job. If I tried to give you a sample of what it would sound like, you'd hear my tower PC instead of this one. That's how good it is. Then really quick here, Linux Manjaro working fine. I was surprised to see that it did detect the wireless card and that is all working. Even the Bluetooth, that's using the open source drivers with Linux Manjaro. Overall, I think hands down, this is the best mini PC that I have reviewed so far. So there is one that's slightly better from Mini's forum for gaming performance because it's got an RTX 3070 and that is the Nook i7 that I've reviewed from them. And this I think is better because way less fan noise, better cooling, it's a better size to it. The Nook i7 is a tall but thin small form factor PC. This small form factor PC uh, I like the build of it. We've got real carbon fiber in there now, up, up to uh, around about 70% of it uh, with some of the areas that you see the carbon fiber. We can add an M.2, a secondary one. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gigabit LAN, uh, and the cooling on it is fantastic. So it didn't go over 80 degrees Celsius with all the time I was pushing it hard. That was gaming, Cinebench, all of that. Media playback. Perfect, really, it didn't drop any frames at all. So 4K, HEVC, really high bit rates, not an issue there at all for the dedicated graphics it's got from AMD. Edited videos like an absolute champ. The export times, wow, about 23 seconds. Blew me away, faster than the Intels. But it could have been down to the fact that I'm now using the new version of Adobe 20, 
2023 version of Adobe Premiere Pro. Before it was the 2022 version, they've just made a bit of an update. But the performance now with AMD is matching, matching or even bettering Intel, which is really good. So it's just offering so much. Okay, criticism here. What could I criticize about it apart from maybe, yes, the pricing, it's a little expensive. You can get a bare bones model if you've got your own SSD and you've got RAM out of, say, a laptop that's DDR4 spec, SODIMM, of course, 3.2 gigahertz, you could use it in this. So you could end up having your own build there, supply your own oper operating system. Linux runs perfect on this, lots of power. It's an absolute powerhouse of a mini PC. The only things I've discovered really is that it, it smells like burning plastic in the beginning when I first started pushing it really hard. Now it seems to have gone now, but it was coming around this area. I opened it up again and took a look inside. I couldn't see anything mounting. I just think that's the way it is when it's new. It's gonna give off like a burning plastic smell, which was very off-putting in the beginning. I thought, oh no, is it mounting? But the thermals were actually very good. The other, which is super minor, there's no space for a SATA 2.5 inch drive in this. I mean, really, it's basically the perfect mini PC. And yes, of course, those guys in the comments, oh, but the 6000 series is better from AMD, blah, blah, blah. Yes, they'll probably have a 6000 series release. Those will be coming soon, I hope, before the year's out. So thank you so much for watching my review of the Neptune series HX90G from Mini's Forum which I think so far is the best mini PC, or should I say small form factor PC that I've reviewed so far.